Today's guest received Tony nominations both times he opened shows on Broadway as Sonny in In the Heights and Jacob in La Cage à Fonds. Now he's part of the starry cast of the new dark comedy Domesticated at Lincoln Center Theater. Please welcome Robin De Jesus. Ooh. How you doing? I'm doing well. You're Robin of Jesus. Robin of that's my Twitter name. Is it Robin of Jesus? Well, I'm you, a direct descendant. You've been a, a, a very busy boy. Yeah, right. That was, that was calculated. After Lacage ended, I took like uh, it was supposed to be six months off, and then it became a year, and that was by choice. And the second year, wait, was I want to get of, to that because yeah. you know I, I was reading up on you. There's a lot of like these these fate. You take a lot of these little. We're gonna we're gonna get to all that, but yeah, I want to yeah. talk about this play you're in right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Now this play, Domesticated. It's written by Bruce Norris, mm -hmm. who won a Pulitzer Prize for uh, Clyburn Park, happened. you may have heard of it, and a Tony Award. And it's like top secret. Like, like you know, it's one of these plays where I'm not supposed to know anything. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't been allowed to see it yet. And, um, and I wasn't allowed to read it. And did, they, did you have to like sign away your firstborn or something? Actually, I, or? I didn't. They didn't make us do anything. And it was so funny because just this week, Mary Beth Peel and I, I love name saying that name. I love it. Every time I see her, I go, do 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 <laughs> um, but um, Mary Beth and I were talking and I said I feel like this show is like so under the radar and like no one really knows about it yet we're sold out so it's like it's so odd yeah. and she said yeah no it's true and then I found out that apparently was very calculated as well you know it's all about calculations yes all arithmetic well, Bruce uh, Norris is kind of a mysterious guy yeah he, he doesn't like talk that. to the press much and uh -huh. he sort of like keeps his stuff very very tight What's yeah. he like? What's he like in person? I fucking love him. Yeah. I, can I say that? Sorry. You can say whatever you want. Okay. I I love him. I love him. He seems really, really. Um, he seems like really quiet to himself, but he's he, but he's not. He's just you know he's he takes a lot in, and then he's and he loves um, he loves devil's advocacy. Mm -hmm. You know he loves a good debate. He loves a good argument, which mm -hmm. I can totally appreciate because mm -hmm. I can argue. Um, and that's a lot of what the process has been like with the show in the beginning when we would go through the scenes and, and break everything down. It, it was, you know, we spent hours on, on like a five page scene, like what the hell just happened? But it was amazing and right. it, it informed everything. Um, and he's a really sweet, he's a really sweet guy. I guess now that you say this, I feel like I'm not supposed to say anything about him. You're not supposed to say anything. You're not supposed, supposed, to, say you're not supposed to reveal that he's sweet. He's going to be very pissed off. He's very sweet. He's going to be angry. He is going to be, <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. Okay, so here's what I know uh -huh. about this top secret play. Jeff Goldblum and Laurie Metcalf are in it, mm -hmm. and they, he plays a politician, she's the wife, and it may or may not be inspired by some recent scandals. And the other thing I know is that when Broadway.com first announced this play, your character was called transsexual. That's literally all it said, transsexual. Yeah. Now I notice your character is named Bar Patron. Is it safe to assume you're still a transsexual bar patron? I I I, I will say. stick with bar patron. I was stick with bar. I can say this. <laughs> I I get into an altercation with Jeff Goldblum. Well, wait. The other piece of information <laughs> I was told. This is this is exactly what I was told. Do you play a patron at a bar who has an altercation with Jeff Goldblum's character? That's all. That's all I know. I'm doing an interview with you based on that you have a fight with Jeff Goldblum. Well, I will give you this. My role has a lot in common with three people. Real people? Judy Dench, Viola Davis, Adrian Lennox. Oh, okay. There's a common thread there. Are you, was this a game show? <laughs> this is a game. And that's <laughs> all I'm going to say in regards to the role. I suck at life, I know. Uh -huh. I will say this the show's freaking awesome. It's amazing writing. Okay. It's really freaking awesome dialogue. I literally, when I got, when I got the audition, and I read the script, I could not put the script down. Uh -huh. And and a few of us in the show had the same reaction to it. And I had a lot of friends who were up for it too for other roles in mm -hmm. the play. And uh, and they apparently, every time I told them that I that I booked it, they would say, oh, that script was so fucking good. <laughs> that script was so fucking good. And it really is. It's just really, really good writing. Uh -huh. And then on top of that, Anna Shapiro, who was, I was already obsessed with, because yeah, I loved all the County. She's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then it's like weird, dude. Like you get in the room and you think, "Oh, we're just gonna like do a play." It was like they're like academics. Like I didn't go to college. I felt really freaking stupid in the room. <laughs> there were like words with more than four syllables. This being is a highbrow project for you. I mean, this is it like is. Lincoln Center. Yeah. We got Bruce Norris. We got Anna Shapiro. You got these big stars. I'm not a classy guy. I'm like I'm not classy <laughs> by any means, and that has been the theme of the day today. Do you in, feel in classier life. now that you're in the room with these no. people? No, and I don't want to be classier. I don't. 
Do uh, you now? Do you now? You are a two-time yeah. Tony Award nominee. Yes, <clears throat> that's classy. I, Laurie Metcalf also is. Yeah. But do you um? Do you need to like? Make sure these very important people know. You know, like, do you have to like say to Jeff Gold? Do you have to like casually mention your several times the Tony Awards to make sure he knows that no. you are who you are? You are Robin of Jesus, no, who we love. I do, I don't do that because well, just because I would feel like an a hole. But <laughs> I do know that Anna Shapiro, the director, was talking to Bruce, and Bruce didn't know about that. Oh. Even throughout the casting process, throughout any of this, he didn't know this. Not an In the Heights fan. He didn't know anything. I guess not. And um, <laughs> oops. And, uh, and I don't know if it was when they were looking at playbills or what, but somewhere in the rehearsal process, he went up to Anna and said, did you know Robin was a two-time Tony Did Award nominee? Did you know that Tranny has two Tony nominations? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for using that word. And then, and then she was like, yeah. And he was like, what's he doing slumming it with us? Oh. Was his reaction, which I haven't spoken to him about yet. Because I, 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 because I fear like I feel like if if I if I end up having that conversation with him, I'm going to end up complimenting him on his work, and he's not going to take that. He no. already is not going to talk to you after this interview. Yeah, you, you're, you're revealing too much. Um, <laughs> so, can you give me one detail about your costume? My costume. There's is two it? different colors. Okay, two. There colors. are two different colors involved. You tell me one of the colors. Um, uh, black. Oh, okay. okay. It's always a race issue. <laughs> um, black and gold shoes. So you get you have a nice juicy scene with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Do you like being around fancy people like that? I do, and you know what's so funny? Um, uh, both Jeff is so musical, uh -huh. and yeah. it's just the two of us in the dressing room. But he's super duper musical, and like he has like his his jazz book that he carries with him in the dressing room. He's like always singing songs and help him get into, it helps him get into character oh, and wow. stuff. And uh, and Lori, who's, who's 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 a pretty reserved person, she loves show tunes. Uh huh. So anytime I sing a show tune backstage, she's like loving it. She's loving it. And so yesterday I was like, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. And she was like, keep going, keep going, keep going. She Are you like in love? Are you it. in love? Are you in love? No. No, but I just like saying that. So, um, and you're in a play. I mean, this is great, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, a lot of times it's very easy to get pigeonholed. Well, it's like funny because when I first came to New York, I got pigeonholed as a dramatic actor. Then it was like drag queen. Because of queen. the movie Camp? Because of Camp. Okay. And then Heights was kind of what made me a comedic actor. Right. And that stuck for a while. Right. And then the Kaj, I was like P-Flag boy again. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> gah, 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 gah. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the current state right now, you know, it's like it's still like the gay boy thing, which I'm totally okay with. The gay boy thing. Well, yeah, because I am. But you and you were, I mean, in camp, camp is a great movie. Yeah. I mean, you just had a reunion with your, with your castmates. What's it like to watch that, that 10 or 11 year old, 11 years ago version of yourself it's so on weird. the screen? It's so weird because. You were right out of high school. Three weeks out of high school. Right. Three weeks out of high school. And unlike any other experience I've had, that one, for whatever reason, is a blur. It's mm. a really, like. Like I, the filming of it and the. Yes. Like, I, I get. So you don't remember Certain specific things. moments of like filming, like when you watch the movie? Do you, are there literally scenes where you're like, I don't remember filming that? Yeah, I can remind you of the scenes that were cut, uh, which is really weird. Huh. Um, but they were like, for whatever reason, like I, I someone will, we, when we had the reunion, people were bringing up old stories, and I totally just like felt like, did I do heavy drugs and I've totally <laughs> forgotten? Did you? Did no. You do heavy drugs? You I wish everyone? my life were that fascinating. <laughs> I've always wanted a good VH1 story, you know, but that's not. That's mine is. So, totally boring, but um, but yeah, it just it, it, it's such a blur. And I think also, I felt so small in that time period that I probably chose to forget it all because uh, uh -huh. I sort of fell apart because it was the first time that I wasn't the only fierce kid. Mm, okay, so in high school it was all about you and like in a you way, did like a cabaret show I read in, when you were in high in school. In high school, my senior year. Tell yeah. me about that cabaret show. There were a couple other kids that were talented, but you know, it was like I I I did sort of have the spotlight a lot. Uh, or the spotlight was on me a, a lot. And then my senior year, the community theater that I grew up doing shows at, they had this thing where the senior who had been with the theater the longest or whatever would get to do a show, oh. was their show. And the thing about our theater was, we did original musicals. Oh. We didn't, we didn't get the rights to shows. We did original, serious uh, work. Okay. Um, and so the, we could either, I could have either done a musical or my own cabaret act. And so we did that. You did a cabaret, did it have did, a name? Oh my God, it was, I think. I think it was called Robin De Jesus, An Evening with Robin De Jesus, Fact and Fantasy. All right. It was real. And your new one at 54 Below, 
It's called Crush to Crushed, although I think it's it's written differently on the website, but <laughs> Crush to Crushed. Let's get that out the there. Two is the word. So tell me about the high school cabaret. High what, school cabaret. What did you do in it? Oh my God, I did like leaning what on was, a lamppost. What I was did, the big moment? Like what was the big the like big, 11 o'clock moment? The 11 o'clock number was, um, and I didn't pick this song, I didn't even know, um, this is one of those moments from Yentl. That was the encore. Wow. It was everything, it was dramatic, <laughs> and it was like real. And, and I was like giving it all, and um, and I remember we did like Fame, from Fame. We did snippets wow. of a lot of okay. songs. Some we did some West Side Story stuff. Uh, I remember my voice teacher at the time, who was was horribly against belting, uh -huh. was really upset because I was doing like a riffy version of Summertime. <laughs> and then so that she reamed me at my next voice lesson. It's like that belting is unhealthy. It's not safe. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So you were okay. You got Camp. Camp was a, a nice indie hit. Yeah. Um, you still obviously still have fans from that movie. You came to New York, and then like here, so here's what I was learning about you. That was I said earlier. There, there's like all these periods like where you, you you like you've had a lot of like ups and downs. You're young. You're not even thirty yet. You're yeah, twenty nine, right? Twenty nine, yeah. You've had, and you've had so much happen to you, but then I'm like, wow, it's interesting to have all that happen to you at such a young age. Is all that like? Like kind of scary because I remember reading like after camp you came to New York and you were like waiting tables, and then you were like, uh, and you kind of had like a, mm -hmm. a downfall. Like three right? years, and then you got in the Heights, and that was like a great long period of, for you and great friendships and mm -hmm. I mean just amazing, and then like, you it seems like you have a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, and I even read that after your um. You told us after your first Tony nomination, you had to go into therapy. Yep. And then after after Lacage, I heard you said you just felt like you weren't good anymore, and you had to take a break. How you doing? Are you yes. okay? Are you, how, how you doing today? I'm great. And every <laughs> one of those moments has been so necessary. I mean, camp was one of those experiences where afterwards I couldn't get a job if my life depended on it. Mm. I just I didn't know. I'm, camp was um, it was non-union. Um, they were looking for kids who didn't have any experience. So it, right. it just kind of yeah. worked out. But very when raw. I, very raw. Yeah. And when I moved to New York, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Yeah. I didn't even have a book. I remember going into an audition once and handing the pianist the music out of order. And then I hear plunk, 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 because he doesn't know where the hell I am. What would you sing? I know you sang, I believe I could fly. I believe for a camp, for, I think I could fly. Do you want to sing a little of that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> no. I remember the word, the word that... Um, that, that Todd Graff used to describe me and the reason he gave it to me was he said because it was tragic. <laughs> Which I feel like was, was not a compliment. Like he's like, there was something a little third world about your performance and I think I like it. I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna keep that. I want you to bring that to the, to the movie. Um, but then after Heights, and Heights was a, such a great period. It was like everything I ever wanted. Yeah. But I could not cope with, with the success. Mm. And and I really became sympathetic of people like Britney and, and what's her face now. Was she going through her like shaving head thing? Yeah, and all that? And I got like... it. I totally got it because everything that I wanted happened. Literally everything I wanted happened. Right, and now what? And I still wasn't happy. Hmm. And then I forgot the struggle and felt like I didn't deserve it, which was fascinating. Uh -huh. Like I suddenly forgot all those years where I wasn't working. Um, and hmm. I remember Whoopi Goldberg was the person who came to see Heights. And I said something that obviously must have been negative, and she implied that I was going through it. Hmm. She took a breath, and, and the breath was kind of like, am I going to help this child or not? <laughs> and then she decided to help me. Wow. And she said, baby, the only thing you can do wrong right now is to uh, disrespect it. Huh. And the only way you can disrespect what happened is by not celebrating it. Clearly, something thinks that you are deserving of this moment and all of the success. Right. So whether you feel like you deserve it or not is none of your business. Huh. But something thinks you, you deserve this. And if you don't celebrate it, then it just won't happen again. And that really stuck with me. And so that, that was where I saw the fork in the road. And I, and I thought to myself, I can either substitute something else to supplement my happiness, mm. be that you know partying, drinking, whatever, mm -hmm. living your life in other negative ways, mm -hmm. um, or I can figure out the root and, and of the problem. And I, and I did that. And, and my priority shifted, and I think what I realized was that my love for this business and, and, and my geekiness for this business yeah. became an obsession. Huh. And that's very different. Okay. That's when, for me, I feel like that's when love becomes unhealthy uh -huh. in any way, shape, or form. And, and so I had to step back, and, you know, and then I thought I was so smart, like I had it in check, and Fixed I was doing it. the college. Everything was fixed. And I was like, I know what I'm freaking doing. Like, 
I'm living my life. This show's great, but whatever. It's just like a show. I'm living my life. And then my dad got cancer. Mm. He got colon cancer. And that really, like, that really shook mm. my world. And so I, I don't know if I've ever said this, but I left the show early. I was supposed to stay longer. Mm. And they let me out and, of the show. Um, and so that, I, it was supposed to be six months to just sort of focus. I was taking my dad to chemo, and then he quit chemo. And then the six months became a year. And then I was ready to work again, but the work was sort of stereotypical. Mm -hmm. I was sort of in pigeonholed. Um, and so I was turning down a lot of work that I thought was either stereotypically gay or stereotypically Hispanic or whatever. Mm. Um, but I think I just got to a negative place. And I think I was probably attracting that because I was so busy complaining rather mm -hmm. than the creating. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just totally had a shift around in my life as to what my priorities are. And I like went to Connecticut for a while, which is where my family is. And so mm -hmm. I was still auditioning and doing that. I went to LA for a bit and then came back completely refreshed and ready. And I feel like New York knew that because mm -hmm. all of this other amazing stuff happened. The, the one good thing about that downtime was that me and my friends wanted to write a book. And we wrote the book and we have a publisher. And now we're eventually going to edit it. And release it. What book? What, what is this? It's a it's a musical theater book. Uh, oh. It's a sort of a how to like when it's the book you'd give to Millie when she first gets to New York. Okay. And say like this is what she comes through the revolving door and you hand her this. And you go take it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> and then and then I guess it's kind of like how to succeed. Um, and you wrote it with who? I wrote it with my friend Stephanie Clemens, uh -huh. who's fabulous. It was her idea. She's the one that put got got us all together. Uh -huh. She's one of the um, folks in If Then. Okay. And she was in In the Heights. Um, and my buddy Ben Simpson, who's like my little brother, he grew up with me in Connecticut. We did musical theater. He's a lot younger. And so the whole thing about the book is that it comes from different perspectives. Hmm. You know, he's the kid fresh out of uh, college who hasn't had his Broadway show yet. I'm the two time whatever, whatever. Stephanie's the fierce dancer who's also an up and coming choreographer. Okay. And, you know. Cool. And it's great. Look at and you. it's Yeah, and it's hopefully empowering. And, and how's your dad? My dad's great, thank you for asking. He's okay. super duper healthy. Wow, that's Family's amazing. great, yeah. It sounds like you're sort of always around your family. I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> Are I you obsessed with your family? I'm a little obsessed. Did you transfer this obsession with your career to your obsession with your family? I know, and I'm constantly analyzing that and saying, okay, Robin, what's healthy, what's not? <laughs> um, you need to pull back. I have three nieces and nephews, and we're super duper duper close. I feel like I've never loved this intensely and this hard before. Mm when I see them, mm -hmm. and it's a little, it's a little um, unnerving, and I think it's why we'll probably never have kids. Because? Because that scares me. Uh, that bond. That and, intensity. Yeah, uh-huh. That, that wow. intensity, it really scares me. I'm the guy that like crosses the street with them and pictures the, the worst possible thing happening, you know? I know, it's not healthy. I'll if probably go nuts. Right, if your kid, when your kids ever leave the house, you would lose your mind. I would, I'd right. be, I would be like, act two Norma Desmond. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the gun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that one. I'll be shooting all the neighbors. The whole street will be empty. Just Here's what I want to know about Lacage. Yes. I loved the episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> this I don't know great. about Camille Grammer. I loved that episode where they showed her like going to the opening, and that was like the moment of like, and Kelsey was really cold to her. Your uh -huh. co-star Kelsey, and he was really cold to her, and that's when like she started like you started and then at the party there. That was fun. Did you watch that episode? No. What was funny you didn't is see I it? was so out of the loop in throughout all of that. I was so unaware of anything that was happening in the pop culture world. But my sister was the one that pinned it <laughs> because at the Tony Awards, she said they don't look very close. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I'm nominated for a Tony Award. I'm living my life. I was like, I don't care about their problems. Right, I'm all living up in the my gossip. life. I'm like, I'm just mad that Levi Christ won. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and, and, and it was just like, I was so unaware. And then, and then Kate started coming by, the, the new girl, right, and she right. was really sweet. Right, right. But I had no idea who she was. I was so, I was so unaware of everything. And it was, the, it was AJ who played the son. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Um, AJ Shively was the one who caught me up. He's like, do you know what's been happening? <laughs> I was like, where have I been? Look how close you were to that tablet. You could have sold stories. Listen, one day backstage, um, I saw that he was having a rough day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, he being Kelsey. Right. And 
Kelsey and I were friends, and he was really sweet, but I never really had like a, a close, close relationship right. with him. And not because of anything, I just was in my own world. Right. And <laughs> I saw he, his head was a little down, and I just thought, hey, Kelsey, you all right? He was like, yeah, I'm just having I said, like, ooh, I'll pray for you. He was about to open up, and I was caught so off guard that I literally cut him off. <laughs> and said, oh, I'm so sorry, I'll pray for you. Because I, I felt so uncomfortable it in that weird moment. Th that he was going to do that. Yeah. Right. I wasn't ready for it. Right. You could have gotten some good dirt. I totally could have gotten. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it, it must be weird to be around those like famous people. You know what I mean? And then and you're just relating to them as like co-stars. You know, that's just like a co-star moment. But it's like, well, you're Kelsey Grammer, and I'm going to watch all this unfold on Bravo in a couple months. I feel like as a celebrity, you must feel so watched all the time. Right. You must feel like you're. Old. I remember that happened to J Lo when she came to see In the Heights. Oh yeah, J Lo. What did she want to like be in the movie? Didn't she? I don't know. Oh, that ever was that ever confirmed? I don't know. It wasn't ever confirmed, but I feel like she was supposed to produce it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if she was right. producing. I'm sure she right. wanted to be in it. Um, but um, but I remember she came to see the show and and she said, "Oh my God, it was like so crazy. Like I, I almost cried when Abuela died, but then I realized people were watching me. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's rough. Right, right, right. It's okay. You can cry, J Lo. You can. You cry. can totally cry, boo. We all cried it in the Heights. <laughs> Abuela, I mean, come on. Well, Claudia was everything. Sad story. But that movie, that... You know, I, the In the Heights movie. I need it to happen, I need it to happen soon, because I, I want know, that I, little boy from Modern th from Modern Family. Yeah. He needs to play Sonny. Why, why can't you play Sonny? Oh, okay, please. wait a minute. Child, no, 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 stop. I was thinking about this before you came <laughs> in here. In my opinion, Oy. Sonny and Usnavi can be like, as oh, I'd be, it'd almost be better. It'd be hilarious if they were like pushing sixty, and, and, it was the, and they're in the bodega, and all the children around. Come on, what, it doesn't matter. I personally think that every revival of in, of in the Heights for the rest of the time, you and Lynn should be in it, and it'll be all newcomers. <laughs> I would like that. Come well, on. Seeing as though Karen Lebo retired, I want Nicole Scherzinger to come in. <laughs> and be. Right, well, you can't offend Karen because she's she retired. She retired. She's right. done. What is that's interesting. Now that that actually is interesting because, I and it. I think about your ups and downs. You talked about. Did you ever think, because you are so young, you could still be fresh faced in any industry? <laughs> Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think of like maybe this isn't right for me? Maybe I should go do this. Right before Karen did. Really. I did. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, like, it was other. It was because of other reasons, and it was going to be like a like a, a break for a few years. I felt like I had just. I felt like I had other priorities that were more important. Hmm. Um, do you ever think about what you would do? I don't know what else I would do. God, hmm. I was a horrible waiter, so I sure enough wouldn't. Were you? That. You worked at Bubba Gum. Bubba Gum Shrimp Company all day. I was a terrible waiter. Like I would just get so flustered, and like if I was in the weeds, it was just run, because I will take you down with me, <laughs> and trying to help me like you just get above water. Um, and thank God I don't have to do that anymore because. So you thought about it, and then it, 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 and Karen did it instead. Karen did it instead. And yeah. You were like, well, I'm like I'm following her, so I'll just I'm just gonna happy. keep going. Let's get let's talk quickly about your cabaret act. Yes, yeah, at yeah. At fifty four yeah. below. Yes. So that's happening right before Thanksgiving. November, right before Thanksgiving, November twenty fourth and twenty fifth, nine thirty. And it's all yeah. about uh, crush like, to crushed. Right, so it's all about. Sex and love. Can and you imagine? I just started talking shit about all the people that I've been in relationships with. Yeah. At this by one name, right here. By name. No, no, no. It's not that. It's basically like um, um, I'm talking about you know relationships in general and and starting from the 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 crush phase all the way through when you're left crushed uh -huh. and where that leaves you afterwards. Okay. So meeting family relatives for the first time, um, first time you kiss, first time you go on a date, first time you don't like each other, or well, the first time you see it going downhill, the first time you have sex. Yada yada, oh. just like random things like that. Um, are you good? Are you good at relationships? Are you in a relationship now? I'm not in a relationship, but I think I actually think I'm amazing at relationships. Oh, you are. <laughs> like, are you romantic? So cocky. I'm very romantic. I, I definitely have issues, you know. Uh huh. Um, I'm a lot of energy. <laughs> um, are you a lot like, to Are you a lot to take? I am at times, but when I'm home, I'm like, I tend to like, yeah. Okay. I I tend to become a housewife. Uh -huh. um, very domestic. <laughs> um, so Domestic Hate is about to open at the Mitzi E New House yes, Theater. Yes, for? Uptown, I don't know what the E's for. Yvette. Um, okay, okay. Mitzi yeah. Yvette. Go with New that. House. You know what, your job is to find out tonight what the E stands Except for. Except Yvette is with a Y, isn't it? Yeah, it, doesn't, it didn't work. I'm a literate, I didn't go to college. You. I was going to let it go. <laughs> Eunice. Yes. Eunice. The Mitzi Eunice 
New House. <laughs> so in Malfoy, see why they made it? E. The Mitzi Eunice New House Theater up at Lincoln Center, uptown, doing a play. And then you'll be at uh, 54 Below. I'm going to be there to see that show on November 24th and 25th to find out who you slept with. And thank you so much for coming by. My pleasure. Thank you. You're going to be 30 soon. Any, any like quick goals before you're 30? Um, That's a hard question to throw I wish I had my shit together more than Your I do. Shit right. together I more. I love That's that. That's a good goal. <laughs> I love this. That's what we're going to work on. I love that. <laughs> I'd love to learn the choreography to Chorus Line before I turn 30. Which, oh, wow, all of it? I want to learn all of it. Well, okay, well, get, get cracking. We'll wanna, have you back. We'll I do, we'll do a video. Paul. Oh, you want to be Paul? Okay, Paul. All right, yeah, Done. Paul. All right, thank you so much, Robin. Good to see you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.